welcome to the show. Uh, my name is Wale, and this is Tokyo 2020 Rewind. Um, apologies for those uh, who have been waiting. We're just making sure we're getting things right uh, technically uh, before we started the show. Please do accept our apology. Um, yeah, it's another day, Tokyo uh, 2020. Um, we've had, um, uh, obviously, we what we try to do at this. Um, uh, on the show is to rewind and uh, looking at it from the African perspective. Uh, yes, uh, looking at it, especially with regards to uh, Nigeria is doing and every other African country. So um, thank you for joining us, um, you know, and for staying tuned. And it's, I'm so grateful that you got you here to, to um, watch us today. Uh, I've got my colleague and a friend uh, Vivian um, who is also joining us on the show today. Uh, Vivian, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, welcome to the show as you made an addition. Uh, first time joining us on the show um, since we started. Uh, so glad to have you. Um, how's it been for you today, Vivian? Thanks for having me. I'm so happy to be here. Um, today, has been an, today has been an exciting day uh, because of Nigeria One. Uh, mm -hmm. And so I think that's what we're going to be talking about. Yeah, definitely. We're going to be talking about Nigeria and, uh, well, obviously, and uh, obviously also looking at uh, some uh, other African countries that have been doing well at the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. To start with, um, Nigeria started the day uh, with, with a bronze medal, uh, uh, Esse Brumes uh, winning uh, the bronze medal on the long jump, um, you know, setting the path for uh, the... the um, we, we won't call it a Super Tuesday, really, but well, so 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 uh, uh, the the medal rain, the mini medal rain, because um, at the end of the day we've got two. Well, when Nigeria's got two medals now, so uh, Ace Brumes started it, and uh, obviously, um, blessing Borodudu uh, also got a silver medal in the uh, wrestling 68 kg category, uh, defeated by Tamara Mensa of uh, the United States. Um, tell me, Vivian, um, uh, obviously, um, Essay started in and Blessing took over the baton and what have you. Um, what was the highlight today for you uh, with regards to um, those two Nigerians? Obviously, we also had other Nigerians uh, in, in contention. Uh, we had Divine uh, Oduduru who actually dropped out of the 200 meters uh, qualifying coming third, but qualifying times were not good enough to, to make into the semifinals. Tell me about your um, roundup for today. What was it like for, to, for you today? I think uh, it was really amazing how uh, Nigerian women are actually carrying this Olympics. Uh, I, I knew you were going to say that. I knew <laughs> you were going to say that. It's all about the women now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, we did a fantastic job, uh, despite the chaos that was happening uh, with the 10 uh, disqualified. Um, so I think today is bittersweet. You know, we we finally have reached the medal table. We are on 64th position. Uh, we just have to look forward and see how the other athletes uh, are going to compete. Yeah. And obviously, um, I keep repeating ASA. ASA had a, every chance to win the gold medal today, but it wasn't to be because uh, she had um, a few foul jumps. Um, perhaps if they had been good, that would have pushed her to winning the medal, uh, the, the gold medal. But uh, looking at ASA's performance in um, Tokyo 2020, uh, how, would you, how would you say she has fared so far? I think um, so. She was uh, amongst the all all the long jumpers. She was actually in the fourth position overall. So she could have won actually um, a bronze medal uh, because if we look at Germany, uh, Malaika, she's one of the highest uh, long jumpers. So uh, I'd say that um, is a brume. Uh, she did fantastic. Um, I think bronze medal, uh, she could hopefully uh, go on to silver in 2024. Um, I'm just looking forward to see what she's going to do next. Yeah, and obviously the next four hour would be at, in Birmingham for the Commonwealth Games, hopefully. Uh, hopefully she'll be there to um, pick up the gold medal. But at some 
other discussion we had uh, was here about yesterday. You were very particular about the German girl, Mihambo, um, um, and you said uh, it's issue watch out for that girl. And this was obviously before the jump itself, because we were discussing. And um, your prediction actually came through, because uh, um, she 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 actually won. You know, she won gold medal, even though she was. I saw when when the other girls were the American and they say were jumping, and she was like, "Oh my God, I pray they don't win. I pray they don't they don't beat my jump on the sidelines." Why did you decide to go for Mehambo, the German girl? Mm. because she was uh, across many news athletes she was the uh, one of the strongest her personal uh, beat is actually 7.18 uh, uh, meters so she's actually she can jump further than what she did in her finals so i said so i basically thought that uh, she was going to be the one that is a broomy had to look out for mm. and obviously your position came through um now let's move to blessing uh Boru to do who got the silver for um nigerian wrestling uh, freestyle 68 kg wrestling um what was the assessment of that final um a lot of people might see uh in the four one but they probably might think it was one sided but it was far from that mm. yeah I'd say um, I was kind of expecting her to win silver just because um, the opponent that she went against is ranked number one, if I'm not mistaken. So um, it was going to be a very difficult uh, battle between the two uh, ladies. Uh, but again, it's amazing that she was able to actually win the last stage to get to the way that she is. Uh, if not, she would be fighting for bronze instead and maybe not even get bronze. So uh, the fact that she was able to reach the final and get um, the the silver is an amazing achievement for her. And as you said, the, the women, have, uh, they've come to the rescue of Nigerians. And um, obviously, the, all the men seem to be falling by the wayside. But we still got the men to look forward to in the wrestling. Wrestling has been a more like a revelation for Nigeria in this competition, in this uh, Olympics. Um, do, do you see Nigerians, uh, Nigeria actually getting more medals in wrestling, um, you know, as it progresses? And knowing fully well that one of our other Nigerian um, wrestlers, Aminat, uh, crashed out to the Ukrainian girl. Um, do you see, see Nigeria getting one or two, probably three more medals in wrestling? Um, why not? <laughs> Anything can happen <laughs> at this point. <laughs> Anything <laughs> can happen at this point. Uh, we've had so many shocks already um, with the Olympics. Um, but again, I think Blessing may have um, set that standard for the other wrestlers to do amazing during their own matches and uh, be a role model uh, and maybe even come to their training sessions and inspire them to do more than what they're actually doing right now. And and when, when she got that um, silver medal, what I said was uh, that was a golden silver medal as far as I'm concerned because um, above for the um, tactical prowess of the American girls, Tamara Men uh, Mensah, um, uh, bl a blessing will laugh probably uh won that gold because we saw in the first round it was more like tamara actually knew what she wanted to do and the second round all she did all she did was just to manage uh the fight and which was really a credit to her especially um going by the tragic um incident as you know uh the american girl had passed through in her life where do you see blessing has said this is going to be my last olympics mm. Uh, what do you think? Do you think that's that's bye bye to the Olympics? This is going to be the last time we're going to see blessing the Olympic, or, or do you think she might have a change of mind and probably want to give it a go again and say, you know, I just missed the goal just by a fraction, just by, you uh, know, um, maybe I decide to give it a go again. Do you think so? Mm. When athletes say that this is their last Olympic, um, that's mainly what actually occurs uh if you look at if you look at for example usain bolt he said it was his last olympic and he didn't show up in this olympic so i think <laughs> um so i think um if she feels that that is going to be her last olympic then i think mm. that's what's going to actually happen yeah mm. Mm. and we do wish a uh, blessing uh, to do all the best in our uh, future endeavors um 
She's the first person, first, first Nigerian actually, to have won a uh, wrestling um, medal for that country, which is really, really massive. Like I said, the women has come to the rescue of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's so nice, uh, women folk, um, that we're celebrating them today. Um, mm -hmm. And the other person that actually also dropped off was Divine um, Wududuru in the 200 meters. He came third in his, um, his uh, but um, obviously time wasn't good enough uh, to uh, qualify him for uh, the next round. What, what's what's the, what's what's next for Divine? Uh, he got disqualified in the, in, in the hundred meters. Um, then obviously got into his specialty, the two hundred meters, and and uh, couldn't make the grades. Uh, what's the next one? Should we should, should we should we still expect him? come 2024 in Paris? Mm. Um, all these athletes are going to be slightly older than what they're currently. Um, if we look at um, the 17-year-old that came first in his hit, um, he's going to be 20-something. So I think um, maybe Divine will be slightly slower than what he's actually uh, performing right now. Um, again, anything can happen. Um, it, there could be many reasons why he didn't perform as best. Uh, it could be maybe because of the disqualification or because um, he just wasn't his best that day. So um, we just have to wait and see uh, what exactly he's going to do in, in 2024 or in the Commonwealth. Okay, so uh, we're going to be joined by um, uh, another of our guests today. Uh, so we've got um, some guests lined up. Um, so Obi is joining us. Uh, Obi Asika is joining us. If Obi is um, Obi, if you can hear me, th thanks for joining us on the show. We're still trying to um, get connected to Obi. Um, so whilst whilst we try to uh, get connected to Obi, I just um, okay. I think Obi is joining us now. Okay, before we we um, before we get connected, Toby, we've still got another uh, very fine wrestler that's coming up uh, that obviously would be uh, on show. Uh, that's we're talking about Odoaya Dekoroye, who is um, in the fifty-seven kg uh, freestyle. Um, who obviously people are saying is going to be the poster girl, not going to be, but also the poster girl of Nigerian wrestling. Tell me. You predicted that Miambo, uh, the German girl, was going to beat S.A. Brumer and win the gold. Uh, this was clearly a day before uh, they, they squared up. Um, your prediction on um, on Odoaya, what do you think? Um, she's going against um, one of the strongest um, European champions uh, in her very first competition. So... I, I'd say we just have to pray and see how she's going to perform. My prediction would be that I don't want to be really pessimistic, but she might lose because because she's going against oh, one. No. Of <laughs> she's oh, going. No. Against... <laughs> Hopefully, she wins though. But she's going um, against one of the strongest. You know what? I hate it. I'm asking you for predictions, uh, Vivian, because all your predictions usually come true. But hopefully, I'm going to disagree with you on that and. Um... Hopefully, you no, know she wouldn't win. She go all the way to win the gold medal for Nigeria. We need that gold big time. Yeah. Um, Femi Adifeso is also joining us. Uh, Femi, thank you for joining us on the show today. Um, uh, hello, Femi. Can you hear us? Hello, Femi. Uh, Femi Adifeso is a basketball uh, expert, and um, um, we also we'll be talking to him about what went wrong with the tigers what went wrong with the tigers at the olympics femi thank you for joining us how are you doing today femi i'm good uh good to be here oh, uh, always always sorry I always smiling schedule, but... no problems yeah, always yeah. smile your, your smile is always <laughs> infectious mate <laughs> yeah. thank you femi, thank you femi, femi so nice to have you here um tell me what went wrong with our with our boys and girls in basketball at the Olympics? There was so much, so much hype, you know, for for, for yeah. the two of these teams, and um, but neither of them 
you know, went back with, with, with a win, you know, it was a bit terrible for us. But you being close to that, those teams and obviously being um, very close to basketball, especially in Nigeria and over, over the world, what do you think went wrong for us uh, at the Olympics regarding basketball? Okay, I, I, I will start with the guys. Uh, mm. I, I will start with the guys. I, I, I think um, it, was, it was more of a selection error from Coach Mike Brown. Wow. Um, he, 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 he got a couple of guys that are very talented, no question about it, but they lack experience uh, playing at that level. Uh, if you look at it, there was actually nobody from Rio 2016 on that squad. Uh, someone who has played uh, for Nigeria, played FIBA tournaments at that level. Uh, there was no Ike Diogu, no Farouk, no Ben Uzo, no Stan Okoye. Uh, so, so if you look at it, we, we lost most of our games in the fourth quarter. And uh, for me, it was a case of lack of composure and game management. Uh, also, you look at the fact that there was really no leader on the floor on that team or a player who was a leader in the locker room or on the bench. So it, it was a case of not having, you know, leadership from a player perspective and experience to play at that level. Talent, I have no question about the, the quality of the players. Uh, for the coach, I actually have no question about his tactics, even though I felt he didn't adapt really quickly uh, because we saw a lot of mismatches, particularly in the game against Italy, and we, we couldn't react quickly enough um, to, to get those games. I thought those games were winnable for us. The game against Italy was winnable. The game against Germany was very, very winnable, um, and we lost those games. And the only thing I can point to is the fact that there was really nobody experienced enough to help the guys calm their nerves, we were rushing when we didn't need to. Uh, we, we could, you know, could take our time, run the short clock uh, before we uh, took shots, look for the best opportunities. Or it was a case of just high transition basketball, NBA style, everybody running through. <laughs> uh, whereas you, you look at those we are playing, they're, they're playing European kind of basketball, which is more of the ball yeah. movement. And none of our Euro based players, I mean, quality um, Euro based players, was on that team. I just mentioned a couple of names who I felt. You know, they played at that level, Ike Diogu, Ben Uzo, Stan Okoye. They would have been able to, you know, help the, some of the guys with some, some guidance. So um, I think that was where we fell short and the leadership thing I mentioned. Because I saw some comments from Ch um, Chimeze Metu about, um, yeah. you know, the lack of support and preparation and all of that. Um, trust me, uh, Ike Diogu will have a lot of stories to tell as far back as from 2009. It's not, it's, I mean, this is an irony of some sort in terms of how we prepare and the logistics and the planning, but it's always been like that. And for for a player of you know who may have experienced such inadequacies, it would be a shock. And they probably would have developed a way of you know handling such a situation and helped their teammates to handle it. Um, even though it's an awkward thing to do, but it's, it's Nigeria. Even look at the track. Um, Mm. Athletes, they've been, they've, they've gone through a lot. Um, the travel time, their preparation, everything, even as as simple as you know the the um, uniforms they will wear to compete. There's a case about Puma yeah. wearing. So mm. that's how much distraction there is in the Nigerian camp, and it's always like that. And I don't think it will end in Tokyo. I'm not a, a seer of doom, <laughs> but we know these guys. I live in Nigeria, and I deal with these things every other competition. Um, when, it, when it comes around. So I, I think that was where we were lacking for the men. For the women, I, I, I was a bit even more optimistic about their chances. Why? No, um, they, they didn't beat the USA in a friendly or anything, but uh, the trend, the trend we've gone through going to the World Cup, getting to the quarterfinals, we're playing virtually almost the same teams that we played um, at the World Cup in 2018 in Spain, also at the... Um, Olympic qualifiers, uh, which was a couple of months back, uh, where we played USA and a few other teams. And, and these girls showed they could compete. Uh, but the way we fell apart against France was very surprising for me. Because we also have a couple of ladies on that team who play professionally in France. So they know a couple of these players. They are either their teammates or opponents they played a couple of games against. So I didn't see that coming. I felt maybe perhaps it was a psychological thing. Getting to Rio was a good enough achievement. So it kind of, you know, destabilized their mindset and how they approach the game. Because, of course, we knew the USA game was 
going to be really tough. It was a big mountain to climb. So maybe we won't win the women uh, basketball team of the United States because uh, they haven't lost uh, God knows how many games in, in, the, in the Olympics. Uh, so it, that was going to be really tough. But I mean, against France, uh, against Japan, against Japan, you could see already the liturgy, how we defended. We couldn't you know, yeah. defend the perimeter. They were just shooting. And we couldn't even shoot. I think we, had, we, we shot less than 10 three-point attempts the entire game. And Japan shot over 29 three-point attempts. So you could see the timidity in, 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 in from the girls. And it, for me, it felt like maybe perhaps um, that game against France overwhelmed them and they felt, oh, we've come to the Olympics. We are Olympians. Maybe we leave it at that. No need to strive for something more. Uh, that's my own personal yeah. opinion and how I see it because it felt like the fight, the energy that you see in them, you didn't, we didn't see it in those games. And I could see the tears in the eyes of Izini after we lost that game. And he told me, you know, just how much passion she had and how much she wanted to win. But I guess she was the only one who had that fo razor sharp focus and mindset. But I mean, the, the other girls kind of didn't show up as much as we'd have expected. And I also think the distraction of the Ogumike girls coming on the team, not coming on the team, also played a part, in my personal opinion. Because, okay, would they be on the team? How would we adjust to them being on? Um, we did not, okay, how do we continue playing with our girls? So all of those things coming together, uh, for me, I think is what affected uh, both teams and how they perform in the end. But, but there are still lots of positives to take away. And I tell everybody who cares to listen, that for the D-Tigers, they just have one thing to do, redemption at Afro Basket. Is it that they win or everybody totally see them as busts and perhaps a total restructuring of that team at the beginning, although they are young and I think they have the future. And for the ladies, two-time Afro basket champions, I don't think they have anything to prove on the continent. If they win it well and good, I mean, only consolidates and cements their supremacy on the continent and hopefully gets them you know, going in terms of confidence. So that by the time um, maybe the World Cup qualifiers come around, the ladies are prepared and they are firing, are ready to go. Well, uh, the, the uh, Afro basketball will take place in Kigali, uh, Rwanda, sometime in September, I think. Uh, COVID um, willing, uh, we should see uh, the Tigers again um, doing what they should be doing. Just like uh, Femi said, uh, if if they don't win that, then there'll be fire on the mountain, like we always say. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, we've got uh, Obi Asika here uh, also joining us. Uh, thank you for joining us, Obi. Um, yeah, hi, how you doing, man? I am doing good. How are you? Thank you for joining yeah. us. Uh, just qu qu I was listening to, quickly. I was listening to Femi. I don't really agree yeah. with that. <laughs> exactly. So I just want to have your take. I wanted to have your take on what Femi has just said about the uh, the two two teams, the Tigers and the Tigress. What's your assessment? Yeah. What went wrong for us? Um, preparation went wrong. Really? Yeah. Well, you took it took 35 hours for the team to get to Japan, right? I don't care how talented you are, if you're not actually prepared, if you don't actually have support, you're not going to play your game, right? And the truth of the matter is, I think that the Tigers, I had, a, I had many conversations with our coach, Mike Brown, and what I could see is that that's the most motivated I've seen a new national coach for almost any of the national teams in any sport for years. Um, he put together an incredible group of young, talented Nigerians who are excited to represent Nigeria, no matter where they're based. Um, they, yes, they had a great lineup in the, in, the, in the friendlies. We all know those are friendlies. And if you know the rankings, you know that somebody who's ranked number 22 in the world, beating somebody who's ranked in the top four is actually a freak result. Um, so I think coming into... Okay, I think we lost Obi there. We'll try and reconnect with Obi. Um, uh, Femi, Obi is um, obviously not, this is not not agreeing with what you've said about the fact that we went there with a young team, no experience and what have you. Uh, he said, you... he's talking of... Hello, Obi, are you back? back? Yeah, yeah, you're back. Go yeah, on, I think go I... on. Yeah, yeah, so I think, I think yeah. you know, preparation is a big issue. I think um, I, I can see upside. Right. I'm not really for me. The Olympics is occasional once in four years. I'm more interested in what happens on a consistent basis over the next one year, two year, three year. Build a team, build a domestic league in Nigeria, 
and actually can feed a team. Do you understand? Don't just show up at the Olympics in four years and expect to win. That's absolutely ridiculous. Nobody else does that on the planet except maybe Nigeria, you know? And so I don't even think, uh, I think that our athletes who succeed, they succeed in spite of Nigeria, not because of Nigeria. Because I don't think we do the right things in terms of development. I don't think we do the right things in terms of investment. We don't develop our coaches, right? So we don't have the fundamental. We don't have compulsory sports in schools. We don't have domestic leagues. So really, what you have is a nation of sports spectators with a lot of potentials. So I look at sports almost like the country's potential, right? You have world-class athletes everywhere in Nigeria, with amateur administrators. I mean, I, I, was, I am very confident to tell you that Hey, look, I mean, I'm over 50 now, but when I was when I was a schoolboy, school I played proper sports. And I will tell you that my sports, the organization of my under-19 or under-16 school football team is better than the NFF. <laughs> it's better than the NOC. It's better than the track. I'm telling you, it's not, I'm not even joking. So the thing, of, the, the truth of the matter is, you're, we're not giving ourselves the opportunity to compete on a level playing field. It doesn't matter how talented you are. If you're not if you're not actually prepared to be at the place, you can't execute your talent. And that is probably the biggest issue in Nigerian sport, right? We have, I mean, I was just talking about, you were talking about S.A. Brume earlier, right? Yeah. S.A. Yeah. Brume has been a world-class jumper for years. She, yeah, she had the longest jump in the world this year, but she did very, very well. Very unlucky not to get the silver on count back. I can't see anybody talking down any of these people saying, oh, or Divine. Divine has been on form for like six, six months, nine months. He hasn't run any particularly fast times this year. So I don't see, I don't see why anybody should be like, you know, he had, I haven't seen him do it this year. I think Divine came into the Olympics not quite at his 100%. And of course, getting disqualified in 100 meters doesn't help your confidence, right? Okay? So even in the 200 meters... Maybe he went out a bit too fast in his heat, right? And it cost him. You saw Lathan Lyles, the American, who who turned off the gas and almost didn't qualify, right? Having basically won the heat. So just because you're a talented runner does not mean you have big game experience. It doesn't mean you've learned how to navigate competitions and multiple run days. You know, all these things that are involved in actually winning championships or meddling at championships at the highest level which are all to do with coaching and preparation and development, not just the running talent, right? You know, the mental preparation to actually go and win is very, very... I mean, Blessing Okorududu for me is an incredible story. That's an incredible story. I wasn't expecting her to win the gold. She's never hardly ever beaten that lady. And you could see from the fights, the ladies, frankly, that's the gold medalist. So for us, I think Blessing is a gold medal, you know? I take it as a gold medal because the truth about the Olympics is getting to the Olympics is the first, is the biggest, is the big deal, right? If you get to the Olympics, you could be a national champion and you do the Olympics at the Olympic stand, so you're still not going to go to the Olympics. So getting to the Olympics is the height of anything to do with sports. Now, if you get to the Olympics and you actually get to get the final, then hey, now, it's, it's like, I mean, I was extremely upset this week. I saw a lot of nonsense being written in the Nigerian press that I did okay fail. How could you fail when you're the first Nigerian to get to 100-meter final in 25 years? How, how, what kind of moron writes like that, right? How, how is it possible to understand that only eight men in the planet of six billion in a 100-meter final? You, know, you can't fail if you got to the final. Yeah, even getting to the to the heats is incredible. And then you're coming out of Nigeria and you want to compete with the guys who have proper programs, proper investment, proper resources, who have a domestic circuit, who compete at college, who compete on a professional circuit. And then somebody says you fail. I mean, there's a, the, a big problem we have is we don't understand sports. We're a nation of sports illiterates. That's the truth. We love sports, but we don't actually understand it. So if you don't understand the values that sports bring or why sports is important to society, ask yourself the question. In any of these countries that is good at sports, sports is compulsory in school five days a week. We don't have That's sports true, in our yeah. schools. We don't have sports in our schools. We don't have sports in our societies. Where's the sports in your community? 
who, who is playing sports to this weekend or last weekend? If you go to America, American soccer mums, they're probably 20 million every weekend taking their kids to tournaments. Same thing with football, soccer, basketball, hockey, tennis. That is what people do in Australia, in South Africa, in Kenya, in Ghana. Do you understand? We do not do this. So I feel like we are very entitled just because we have talent, we show up and we expect to win. And we have, and there's no basis for it. Okay? Uh, Chidi Imo and Innocent Ibunike are people that were absolute world class. They emerged from nowhere and still had no support. Francis Obikwelu is another one. I mean, we, you know, we've been producing them for centuries. So if you really watch the sprints, you know, and what happens is the world worked it out 30 years ago. Okay, these Nigerians have talent, but they're not focused. So they started sniping our talent. So, you know, you see the Nigerians are running for England. They're running for Canada. They're running for America. They're running for everybody. Italy, Qatar. They're running for Qatar. Of course. Why wouldn't you run for Qatar? Look at that Diggle case, 2021. You're saying he failed. Qatar comes and offers him $5 million to, as a running contract for the next five years. Are you going to tell him not to move? No. Are, are, you even giving, are you even giving him fifty thousand dollars into his commitment into his into his program? Have you have you I heard think... the, the the most recent one? So the most recent one is um, uh, the the federal minister of sports in Nigeria saying anyone that wins the gold medal uh, gets gets uh, fifteen thousand uh, dollars. If you win silver silver, you you're getting ten thousand dollars and so on. So the thing is, well, so I can't so, say that. I don't have any money, so I, I you know it's like. You know, there's a chicken and egg situation in Nigerian sports. I'm sure you know. Like, mm -hmm. the sports ministry has no authority really over the federations. And the federations have become, you know, like, um, they've been, they, they're under state capture, like much of Nigeria. So, you know, it's like, let's say me and my boys are controlling hockey. Then some other boys are controlling athletics. Some boys are controlling basketball. <laughs> and then when they argue, there's no domestic league. So the ego of the Nigerian big man and that culture has killed all the federations. Then there's no sports development in the schools. So when you look at our ecosystem, what you see is there's nothing. There's no basis and there's no roadmap for anybody to emerge as a world-class sportsman or athlete in Nigeria. Where is it? You can't tell me it's National Institute of Sports. You can't tell me, except for private efforts being made by people, there's nothing. And, that, and, and I think it's we need to tell ourselves the truth and stop living. I like to say denial is a river in Africa. We need to stop that. Okay? We need to stop that. We, we all know our situation. So if you want to change the situation, you first have to acknowledge it and say, okay, how do I, I'm living in Africa near the equator. And I can't grow grass. I can't grow grass for football pitches. I'm using plastic and artificial pitches. Whose fault is that? <laughs> do you know what I mean, we need to ask ourselves a whole bunch of questions. And this is not about money. It's not about, oh, there's no money. It's basic stuff. It's about, do we even value sports? Do we value sports? Do we understand why sports has value in other societies? Do we understand why sports is the biggest of all the soft powers? Why, if you are in advertising or media, you know that the biggest thing every brand spends money on is sports and then music. But in Nigeria, we still take it as vocation. We still take it as, oh, uh, those people are doing something. You know, whatever they're doing, they're doing. So you're not, you know, when you want to compete with world class yeah. people, then don't show up half cocked and then start yapping your own people, your own athletes who got there without any support, in spite of where he's coming from, and he's standing on the same place as you say Bolt or somebody else. Who's had all the support for 15 years and then you say to Obi. him Obi. Obi, say thank you let me just call in short Femi <laughs> um Obi, Obi is basically what Obi is basically saying is um we need to uh do do the right things uh with regards to Nigerian sports there's, there's obviously no sports development it's not an issue of talent we've got the talent but we haven't got the structure we haven't got the organization and there's no need for us to say, um, okay, there's a competition going on, and we just send us sportsmen and women there and expect them to perform miracles. Uh, it's not done. You are, you are in Nigeria, obviously, you follow um, not just basketball, but most of the sports down there in Nigerian federations, grassroots. What would you say to that? Are we... <sighs> 
obviously, I, I, I should think the sports ministry is still our director of sports development. And I should think um, every sports association down there in Nigeria will probably have a plan for sports development, each of their sports development. Where is it going wrong? And what do we do to remedy and obviously to uh, go the path that Obi has just spoken about just now? Okay, I think we lost uh, Femi there. Um, Vivian, before I go back to Obi, you've heard everything is, uh, Obi said just now about the issue with Nigerian sports. And I know we've had this discussion countless times now about getting things right, especially with Nigeria. Uh, uh, what, what's your take on it? Uh, what's your take on it? I think it is still uh, very much unacceptable that, uh, for example, the Tigers, they didn't win a single uh, match. They can be the Afro basket champions, uh, etc. But uh, it's still very unacceptable that they come to the Olympics and they don't perform their best. Well, <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and, and obviously, I'm sorry, I'm I, sorry, I find that wrong because. You're not ranked in the top 50. You've never beaten any of these people in your life. Why should you show up and beat them? Based on what? Just because you're Nigeria? No. I mean, yeah, I want them to win. I want that to happen. But I think we have this attitude that just because we showed up, we should win. No. Even if you had the best performance in the world and the best preparation, you're still not really actually in the top level yet. So I, I don't know how it's unacceptable. I can say it's disappointing, but unacceptable. I don't know about that. Because the other African nations, they didn't even get I think that <laughs> you understand. I think you know yeah. in Nigeria we tend to be very negative to ourselves. Whereas for me, you just need to celebrate the boys representing us in the first place and then build on that. And the next time we win, you understand? Because if I tell them that oh, it's unacceptable, nobody's coming. Why should I represent you? It's unacceptable to represent you. So that means I can't lose. And if you can't accept losing, then you shouldn't expect to win. And that's the fundamentals of sport. That's really, you see, sport is about winning or losing and, and really like, you know, there's a famous poet by, poem called If by Rudyard Kipling. And it basically says, I pray to have the, the wisdom to accept winning and losing as the fraud they both are. You cannot judge, you have to judge people by what they do when they lose. If, they just, if it's just about the winning, sports has no drama. I yeah. think to add to that, I think to add to, add to that would be, and, uh, and I still also believe in this school sorry, of thought. Sorry, I'm not going to show you. <laughs> no, it's all right. So, so um, I, I still also believe in this school of thought that um, what you give, what you give is what you get. I mean, if you don't give that much preparation, that much sacrifice, then you, you, you don't expect to go to the Olympics and say you want to you, you want to win the gold medal. So, Femi, you're back. Femi, I was just asking a question about um, sports development in Nigeria, and, uh, uh, and Obi has uh, uh, made it very clear that, well, Nigeria's got the talent, but the, the, the problem we've got is just has to do with our structure, has to do with our, our organization, has to do with our preparations for every major uh, sporting event, and that we're not taking sports very seriously. I think uh, Femi's dropped off again. Um, Vivian, let, let, let's, talk about, let's talk about your... Uh, I know you're Nigerian origin, but obviously you're also an, an, an Italian. And let, let me bust the bubble now. What was your experience like? What was your experience okay. like in, in Italy um, with regards to... Femi, you're back now before I go to Vivian. So, Femi, what's, what, what do you have All to right. say about that? Yeah, what do you have to say about the issue of sports development and, and lack of structure and lack of whatever you want to call it in Nigeria? And, and, and the, the fact that when we go to any competitions, any competition at all, because we are Nigerians, we're supposed to be the masters of everyone, then we're supposed to just drive everyone aside. Everyone is prepared even more than us. I, I, to be honest, it, it is a big problem, a huge problem. And um, number one, it, it totally just limits the potential of our artists without question. 
uh, because you need all of those to be on your side to be able to get things done properly. Uh, but seeing us as masters, I, I, I don't want to say that. I think we go there and we just believe that great style of serious. Um, we can always get something at the end of the day, which is a typical Nigerian, like we call it the Nigerian spirit. You just come up, show up, put in all what you can, and you get something out. And it, it, it works, yeah, unfortunately for us. So we believe that thing, whatever it is, maybe it's our prayer and our fasting or something, or our village meeting. We always try to get something. And, and we're excited about that. So it, it is a huge problem that we need to face. And, and the truth is, it is there. But, but the sad thing is, it keeps happening over and over. You change ministers, you change presidents, and it's the same thing. And just like Obi said, I think it's, it's, it's basically a function of the fact that we get politicians and people who don't understand the power of sports and what it is, you know, the economics, the business side of it, the, the importance to even the social development altogether. So they don't get it that they should do more and they should put things in place to ensure these things work. You know, but however, I I am also because I've been privy to you know be a part of this journey uh, for some of our teams, particularly basketball in the last couple of years, and we've seen the growth and the projections that we've made or the progress that we've made. I, I also think that um, it goes beyond being motivated and you know having skills. Sometimes, I, I, for example, for example, I, I know this is. Um, um, not so much of public knowledge, but Victor Ladipo was so close to representing Nigeria um, as at Afro Basket 2013. I think he was drafted in 2012. And it was just a simple thing, as, as simple as player insurance, was what stopped him up from, from getting onto the team. Then Coach Ayo Bakari was, was in charge of the team, and the Federation just couldn't bring it out. Then he was even in college at Indiana um, University and he was, he was just about being drafted, but of course he was a big prospect going into the draft and he was eventually drafted number two overall um, in, in, in that class. I, the same year Yanis was drafted, I'm not mistaken, but I think Yanis was number 13 um, in, in that draft class. But what, what I'm saying is these issues are always recurring, they're always there. But for some reason we find ways to make do with what we have. And the truth is, the, the problem is so huge that we have to cut it into chunks and try to solve it one bit at a time. Uh, this is the best period for, for basketball in Nigeria, for example. We are getting all the balls. You know, people are trying to ambush market um, with all that is going on, a lot of affiliation, a lot of donations and stuff. And then you look at the Federation and you're asking yourself, if you are in the right state of mind, you should... You know, not necessarily the word is not cashing, but you should be looking at ways at which you can funnel um, all of this attention and trickle it down straight to the domestic league. But I doubt anybody's thinking about that right now. All that everyone is concerned about is <laughs> doing well at the Olympic Games. I'm not even sure if my brand will be available for the Afro Basket, uh, which is just a few weeks away, uh, looking at it from there. But why I, I spoke about what I spoke about earlier, about why we didn't do well, particularly for the D-Tigers. I, I know the likes of, for example, the likes of um, E.K. Diogo, you know, I've been on teams. Um, I'll put this on record. I've been on teams where they gather together at the airport to leave to represent Nigeria for a competition. There was no training camp, you know, and it, it, it was that bad. And these guys still showed up, showed out, and won, like they still went out to win. Uh, so I, I'm, 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 I'm not saying it's a good thing. I'm not endorsing it. But, but what I'm trying to say at the end of the day is that you know, we we still find a way of making things work. As shoddy as the preparations are, as bad as it is, should it continue? Absolutely not. Uh, we shouldn't support that to continue. We should look for ways to get it out. Um, which is why you know I felt maybe if one or two of these guys were in there. They could have helped with the mindset of the new characters who, of course, won't take all that nonsense. But I, I was reading, I was reading about um, Adora Ilonu. There was a beautiful article on on a new website um, that seemingly a looked like um, the Player Tribune, where she took access. Yeah, Actress thank you very out. much. Yeah. Um, where, 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 where she talked about her journey, and I remember she said something very interesting that when she told her parents 
that she, she was like, doing representing no. Nigeria. There was there was a very but yeah, there was a paradoxical feeling from them because just yes, they wanted her to play, but they knew all the shortcomings of the Nigerian system. And so it was like these guys won't get you all the things that what they, they need you to get. But she still came all the way, knowing fully well that these things are what she would experience. And I can bet you she has experienced all of those things. But somehow, some way, it hasn't stopped her and her teammates from being professional uh, to getting things done. Um, unfortunately, we wish we can wish these things away, but it's here with us. So what do we do? How do we go from here? You know, that's the big question. And it has to start with, you know, getting the right leaders. Our local governments don't even have the right leaders. You know, so how much more sports? So it's a big problem we're in. I really don't know how we're going to get out of it, but we just have to, you know, keep trying to put our best foot forward and try to get the right people in the right places. I know that that's that's just the only thing. Get one person who knows the right things to do, put in there. Let and, and that's what is happening in wrestling. That's why you know wrestling is succeeding because Daniel Ligali is pulling his socks up, is doing what he needs to do, regardless of the NOC. Regardless of the Ministry of Sports or for Sports, you know, is ensuring that all of his athletes are in the top competitions around the world. They are in the right places, getting the right competition, getting the right preparation, ensuring that they are well kitted, they look good, they are well prepared. And he's going out of his way, regardless of the NOC or the ministry. And I think that's what needs to be done. Ownership. There needs to be ownership of the sports by the leaders. And that's where it can start from. If not, we'll keep singing this song. We've been singing this song since Atlanta 96. And this is 2021. And it's still the same thing. And I can almost bet that this is going to happen again in Paris, if I'm not mistaken. There'll, be a, there'll, there'll, be, there, there'll be a remix of a song in Paris. Um, um, <laughs> Vivian, Obi, Obi, before, I, before I, I'll come to you in a minute, but Vivian, you've heard all these things. I suppose that's how it is in Italy. And that's why uh, it's, it, the Italians have been able to pr uh, produce an Olympic champion in 100 meters. Would you say that's uh, that's correct? No. Yeah, it, it is. I'd say I agree with Obi when he said that in America um, we have parents following their kids to tournaments, etc. That's the same thing that happens in Italy. For example, I played uh, basketball. Uh, my sister played volleyball. My brother played basketball. That was ingrained from such a, from such a young age. And even, for example, I remember uh, when I was running in the parks with my best friend, I had someone approach us and say, um, you can contact this website and they can train you to become a fast runner. And of course, um, that didn't happen. I didn't contact the website at the end. Uh, however, this is just how much um, people are just looking at you. Uh, if, you if you're talented, they'll, they will search for you. If uh, they want to train you, uh, they will do so. So... Um, that's how the whole experience is in Italy. And um, again, um, they will reward you with a, a large amount of money if you uh, win gold or silver as well. Obi, how do we get the likes of Daniele Galli into all our sporting federations uh, around the country? Someone who, who de despite the roadblocks set by the sports ministry, by the NOC, by politics, by whatever name you want to call it, he's still standing. And today we're raving about, about Danny Ligali. And obviously a little bit about the NB, NBBF uh, in basketball, because what the, what, what the basketball team have done uh, in this tournament, fine, they might not have won any game. But for me, I think the fact that everywhere you turn, you see either a member of the Tigers or the, ti or the Tigers you know, it seems it seems to work. It, it actually really works because Nigerians weren't actually thinking about other sports apart from basketball, probably until now that wrestling is, is um, taking the center stage. So how do we how do we do that? Well, I, I think I mean thanks for the question. I think there's a number of things. Um, one of them is culture, right? What Vivian was talking about is culture. Okay, we have to develop a sporting culture in our country, which means that. You know, in a country with 200 million, 30 to 40 million should be playing active sports every weekend. The 50 million kids in school should be playing sports five days a week. When you have that kind of culture going on, you will develop a mass market of people who are brought up with values that you learn in sports, which actually help to build your society. 
And that's why sports are so important in the modern world. It's the value, right? That's number one. So that's the at the grassroots level. Number two is elite development, right? So elite development doesn't really start. So it's, it can start at eight or 10, but really should start from maybe 13, 14. When a, when a kid is kind of defining its particular talent, and now you're doing elite development towards either professional leagues, domestically or internationally, and or, you know, for global circuits or domestic circuits. Then there's coaching development. Because I would say that most of our coaches are out of date, out of touch, out of mode. They're not involved. They're not being given the, the product, the skills, the access. But I think also people have to use technology. If you go on YouTube, there's a million coaching channels for track and field. For every single sport, there's intense information online already. So a curious athlete can find a lot of personal development stuff using technology. But we need to build elite sports centers in our country. I was at my friend's place, OBN Academy, this week, last weekend. Already, he's only been open three, four months, right? And I'm saying to him, man, Lagos could take another 10 of these. Easy. And I'm not mm. talking about Nigeria. I just mean Lagos. You already got three kids who have full high school scholarship, $100,000, to go and play b-ball, right? And I'm like... This is one place. If you had a multi-sport facilities like this, if you just put, if you look at the Lecky Corridor and you put 10 multi-sports facilities in the Lecky Corridor, you could have 10,000 people playing sport every day through this facility. But the thing is, we haven't prioritized sports as an investment in terms of development, but I am involved. I am involved in sports policy reform led by HUOB and others. There's also... A private sector move through the Nigerian Economic Summit group that I'm involved in with the sports people. And, you know, the NBA Africa is an example of the kind of thing that needs to happen, right? Local brands and local businesses need to build platforms that work. So whether it is to do uh, under 16, when people talk about the Principles Cup, right? Because that's a nostalgia position. But the truth yeah. of the matter, the, the truth of the matter is you can build platforms Inter-school competitions are critical. University is critical to be competitive in terms of sports. That's the next stage for professional, okay? And then you have to have a situation where, I mean, if you think about it, nobody in Nigeria can name a player in the Nigerian National League, in the Premier League, okay? So all our federations do a terrible job of communicating. Right? What you saw with the Friends of Basketball is what happens when somebody who understands communication gets involved in something. So suddenly, you had a Nigerian sports team trying to connect to Nigerians. And Nigerians reacted. I mean, you know, hey, who wouldn't? Yeah. So the only team that ever tries to really connect to Nigerians is the Super Eagles. And even their stuff isn't managed so well. So the truth of the matter is, you have things to learn off the pitch in terms of administration, in terms of what Femi's talking about, in terms of people like Daniel Igali. But you know, how many Igalis are there out there that have the passion, know the sport, know the politics, have the resources, and are prepared to follow through and not turn it into a personal ego thing? It, I mean, we're all here, we're talking in public. I'm not gonna say some things, but I'm pretty sure Femi knows, I'm sure Bole knows, I, I, I hope Vivian doesn't know, some of the stuff that has been some of the stuff that's been going on with our team and the administration and you know taking 35 hour flights for flights that are supposed to be 10 hours right you know you know i mean our coach i mean you know our coach is speechless he couldn't understand it he said is it is it they don't want us to be successful you know the, the nigerian basketball team could not take two of its coaches into the athletes village right do you understand we can't do such amateur i mean these things are amateur it's amateur night of the apollo we can't be doing this at the professional level you can't get to the olympics and be acting surprised you know nigeria does this all the time we qualify for the world cup a year before the world cup then we get to the world cup but it's like surprise to get the world cup oh we didn't know it was in june you know that? That, oh, oh really look look at this whole thing with the with the with the with the with the, with the doping not doping not testing ban. It's all, it's all, it's all ego and politics. We know that. 
So, at the end of the day, it is a Nigerian problem. It is totally solvable, but you have to have the will to solve it. And what happens in this country is every four years, we moan after the Olympics, and then everybody goes back to ignoring sports until Kamaru or Style Bender has a fight. Right, it goes on. <laughs> uh, Nigerian football players. Anthony so, Joshua. <laughs> yeah, Joshua. So even Joshua, is it not from here that we didn't give him his opportunity at 15 that he went back to London? I mean, London yeah. Look, at the end of the day, if we want to know the truth, right? If you look at Jamaica, in case you don't know it, just like Brazil, 50% of all Jamaicans are originally Nigerian. Why do you think they're so fast? It is obviously clear. It should be clear to anybody that the fastest people in the world are the Nigerians. Yeah. Look at the Americans. Where are they where are they from? Where are those black Americans from? Where do you think they're from? 40% of them are from here, right? Then you look at the English team, and I'm talking over 500 years. I'm not talking recent migration. In the recent migration, you see all the boys in Canada, Qatar, England, even Sweden, Germany. I mean, we, you know, because we have natural athletes. If we talk rugby, I can tell you for free, we have world-class rugby talent. We have a team. <laughs> Just that. So <laughs> talent is not enough, right? And that is, should be the lesson that anybody wants to know about sports. If Carl Lewis only had talent, Carl Lewis would never have made it outside his high school. Okay. If Muhammad Ali only had talent, he wouldn't have made it outside his Louisville where he was born. Do you understand? You've got to have application. You've got to have training. You've got to have investment. And when you add those things to talent, then you can become world class, right? All our people that have succeeded since I was a kid, they succeeded in spite of us, not because of us. And that's a painful thing to have to admit. You know, yeah. it's painful. I mean, think about it. Francis of Bikwelu, I remember clearly what happened after the 2000 Olympics. I mean, it's like, right. yeah. it's so, yeah. it is so painful. You know, the man goes and he, you know, shatters the European record in 100 meters at 200 meters. And he's being given the status that he should have been given in his own country. You understand? Till today, where is Chidi Imo? Where is Inita Tebrike? Have we respected them? Why did it take Lagos State government to give Choma Ajumwa her, 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 her goods, right? What happened to her own state? Forget federal. Do you understand? Right? So at the end of the day, and if you think about it like this, right? we've been going to the Olympics for 50 years. We have one individual gold medal, guys. One. That's it. The football one is a team sport. It's not really uh -huh. the Olympics. It's not really the Olympics. Choma is the only person to win a gold medal for Nigeria, one female. And what have we done to celebrate it? What have we done to even memorialize it? Why is she not immortal in our culture? Why does that? Why don't we use her to inspire her, Marion Yali, Fatima Yusuf, all these great female athletes that we should be using to inspire the next generation? We don't do it. So there's a lot of issues that we have. Some people tell that boy, man, get to work, so they don't get time. But guess what? <laughs> you know, we say that we say all those things, but those things are excuses because guess what? Yeah. The sports can pay everybody in our country. Sports should be a two to three billion dollar industry today, not potentially today. Today, not oh, we can be all that we can be stuff is nonsense. We should have been since <laughs> you know. We were, we, were, we were all alive when the premiership was formed, I'm assuming. Vivian might be a bit younger than us. But, you know, if, <laughs> when the premiership but look was at the formed, premiership today. Bro, the premiership, David Dean bought 40% of Arsenal for £2 million in 1982. Mm. £2 million. When he sold his equity, he got £400 million. That's value. Yeah, that's value. When you build value, you can't lose. And we have enormous human capacity potential. Our biggest asset in Obi, is human. Obi, I, I, Obi, we're, 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 we're run out of time. You know what, Obi? 
I would I would want you to probably join us tomorrow so that we can join we can we can uh, talk more about this. Um, obviously, for me, you got the time. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so you can complain more. Yeah, I'm actually enjoying. I'm actually enjoying this. There's so much to learn. There's so much to, talk about. There's so much to learn. Much to talk about. Um, I mean, we can, we cannot never tire talking about it. We can never tire talking about um, sports in Nigeria, sports development in Nigeria. Uh, just like you said, it's a, it's 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 massive, not big, a massive, enormous, gigantic industry that um, we just can't leave to politicians or those chatterlands to charlatans to destroy. Mm. We we can't do that because uh, if we do, um, how do we get? How do we get well? You know. So. Um, Hopefully, um, Obi and Femi, if you can, join us tomorrow. It's 9 o'clock, and we can talk more about this issue. Uh, but, but for today, I just want to thank you. Thank you, Femi, for joining us short notice. Obi, also, thank you for short notice coming in. Uh, yeah, to nice to meet enjoy. you online, yeah. uh, Nice to meet you, too. Uh, Femi, uh, we'll, 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 chat, we'll chat soon again. And sure. please, don't yeah, don't, maybe don't, maybe. don't, don't, don't don't tire. Don't, what, what, how do you say it in Italian? <laughs> Ciao bella. Ciao bella. And to and to um and Vivian, it's too late for me to say bonjour no now. But um anyway, <laughs> ciao, ciao. I, 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 I see you soon. See you. Uh, grazie, grazie, grazie. So uh, thank you everyone for coming on the show, and uh, hopefully we'll have uh, Femi and uh, we'll be back, uh, so we can talk more about. Um, about sports development, uh, like I said, we can never tire talking about it, you know, because there's so much work to do with regards to developing sports back in, in not just in Nigeria, but in Africa. OK, so uh, massive thanks to you, everyone that's watched the show today. Uh, don't forget to uh, give us a like and also follow us uh, tomorrow. Hopefully we should be here with the two uh, guys we just spoke to. Um, there's much to talk about. Uh, so the the um, wrestling see coming up and hopefully tomorrow again nigeria will smile all right uh from me wale uh special thanks to my producer yemi Mabuja. it's uh, tokyo 2020 rewind join us tomorrow and uh, let us rewind again have a good night <laughs>